Hey, good morning. It's in the uh, five o'clock hour on this Saturday morning. I'm meteorologist Rod Hill coming to you from uh, Vancouver, Washington. My family had to get up early to drive up to uh, Seattle this morning. So I'm up. The weather up here in Vancouver has been pouring and I was really anxious to see what's going on. So notice on the left side, this is the rain report for PDX eight tenths of an inch. Bam. I mean, that is the most rain we have had in four ever <laughs> in one calendar day so this was the radar at five o'clock this morning and circled in red this is all of the rain that actually worked through uh portland and certainly vancouver and is now moving up in the five o'clock hour out through the gorge and into hood river just cats and dogs absolute rain coming down now i'm really curious i said the most rain in forever eight tenths of an inch i'm looking through my my i should have done this before but I'm really curious. This could be the most 24-hour rainfall, or at least in the calendar day, since 91 100s fell at PDX. That was back on March 12th. So, yeah, forever, right? Anyway, on the right side, here's the thunderstorm threat. It should be noted that all of the red and the yellow and the heavy rain, that was that was just heavy rain. There was no no storminess, no thunder. And as far as I can tell, no hail reports that I have seen. It was just rain. The thunderstorm threat today continues to be mainly east of the Cascades in Oregon and Washington and out into Idaho, Nevada, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, et cetera. So we will keep an eye on thunderstorm threat for you folks today. But here on the west side, it's just rain. And I think it's absolutely reasonable to assume that this batch of rain that fell overnight going way back to about midnight is the heaviest rain batch we're going to see. Showers will continue, but the heaviest rain here on the west side of Oregon and Washington is likely over, certainly here in the uh, Portland area. So this has been exciting because we need the rain, as you know. Okay, the Momentous Wealth Podcast continues to be my sponsor. Listen to their investment topics meant to educate you, especially if you have 401ks, mutual funds, and you're saving for retirement. Listen on Apple Podcasts. Listen on Spotify. Okay. I want to get through a lot of topics. Here's that rain report that came out from the Weather Service at 514 this morning. This is an old-fashioned tabular reports. Astoria 33 100s. And then here was that bullseye. Vancouver 63 100s. PDX 8 tenths. Nearby National Weather Service Office 44 100s. Trottel 66 100s. That was the bullseye right along the Columbia River. Hillsboro, though, not bad. 25 100ths of an inch. You got a good quarter of an inch. And then by the time you got down into Salem, the action was mainly north of you folks and only four 100ths of an inch of rain reported. And there wasn't as much up in Washington either. So here is, uh, let's see here, who's got some decent rainfall? Olympia, just 12 100ths of an inch. So again, not that much. Uh, SeaTac Airport, 11 100ths of an inch. So not that much. Again, you folks kind of missing out on the action that we really got hammered with here along the Columbia River. There it is again, uh, the updated radar showing the heaviest rain now starting to move east of Portland. More heavy rain areas, though, on the big radar out toward Pendleton this morning, and you've basically got showers in southeastern Oregon and then some lighter rain up in Seattle and along the Oregon coast. There you can see the, the rain from Astoria all the way down through, um, well, almost into Lincoln City, it looks like. Okay, so a couple of things to point out. Uh, number one, uh, on the left, this has the upper level 500 millibar contours. And remember, this was always going to be kind of a split flow. So you've got a weaker trough up to the north, and then it's this southern trough that we really got lucky, and it kicked not only rain across southeastern Oregon, but spun up those heavy rain showers over Portland and the Columbia River and out into the gorge. Here's the lightning where you see the X's, so the convective convective outlook from the National Weather Service so far right on the money with the thunderstorm activity being east of the Cascades. Again, this is from this disturbance right in here that also spun up the heavy rain into Portland. Now, I do want to point out on the surface map. So here we are in, in, in Portland. Again, it's kind of where the center of my forecast is. Um, you see the cold front offshore? That's going to be, look at me, look at my notes. That's going to be coming into us in about the four o'clock, five o'clock hour this afternoon. So Although the biggest clump of rain here in the west side is now moving away and it will not be repeated. I think that's reasonable to assume. We will continue to see showers in the area most hours 
until this front comes through, and that's four or five o'clock this afternoon. So kind of a showery day. We could absolutely open up some sun breaks. The water vapor imagery shows the, the depth of the moisture down into California, Nevada, and where you see the green colors mainly moving east of the Cascades at this time and some drier weather offshore. Again, we have to wait for this front to come through before the shower chance, scattered shower chance, really starts to work itself out. So if you're going to be out and about today on this Saturday, absolutely expect there to be some showers. I'm going to show you two weather models. This is the three kilometer resolution North American model. Um, this is eight o'clock this morning. You can see the heaviest rain and most of it is clearly out here in eastern Oregon. You've got showers likely scattered over the Cascades of Washington and Oregon. You've got scattered showers along the Oregon coast. And then if you go I-5, there's some showers up around Seattle and some scattered shower activity, but not a lot. But not a lot, right? That's this morning. Does it change? I'm going to play this into uh, now the front's coming through at 4 or 5 o'clock this afternoon. Still some heavy showers, maybe some thunderstorms out east. But notice... Not a lot of rain. Scattered showers, again, mostly banking up against the Cascades with the shower threat continuing in the valley and out the coast, but overall not a lot of action, okay? So I hope that makes sense. One more model. This is the National Blended Model um, that I often show you. And again, once we get into 8 o'clock this morning, mid-morning, there's all that rain out east. There's all the rain up and down the Cascades. There's a scattered shower threat, more so Oregon coast than Washington coast, and some scattered showers in the valley, but not the big clump of rain that we had earlier this morning. And again, I'll play this through uh, 5 p.m. this afternoon. Scattered shower chance, but again, mostly cascades, mostly out across the east. Now, I do believe that this is correct. This is tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. I do believe we'll see some scattered, mostly light showers overnight tonight. And I do believe there will be some scattered, mostly light showers on the radar when you wake up Sunday morning, which is what this is showing at 8 o'clock in the morning. Not much rain out east. Most of the rain actually from Astoria over down through Portland up into Mount Hood. Um and then as we go into Sunday afternoon, here we are, the shower chance lingering, lingering over the Cascades. I'm sorry. This is, uh, this would be what? 2 p.m. Sunday afternoon. Showers lingering over the Cascades. Showers kind of repopping out east. And I really think once we get into the afternoon hours, noon, uh, up and down I-5 that will be dry and then dry weather back to the coast for your Sunday and reasonable that will open up some partly cloudy skies as well. So what about the overall flow pattern? Because I do have some significant changes on my seven day and a showery pattern overall that continues into Thursday, maybe even Friday of this coming week. Now I do have some dry time, but here's here's what I'm looking at. So this is that cold trough. That's This is the European model. This is the cold trough that's working through today. That's giving us scattered showers, at least through the afternoon hours. Uh, here is Sunday morning. See, there's an upper level low. It kind of forms over Washington, northwest flow pattern. There are the morning showers on Sunday morning. And then in the afternoon hours, as the system moves over into Idaho, uh, becoming dry areas west of the Cascades. Now, remember, we have one more system coming in on Monday. That's been in the forecast for a while. Here's that system up to the north. Weather models show that Monday's system could give us a tenth of an inch of rain um, up and down the I-5 corridor. The bulk of the system is up to our north, but that is some likely showers morning into early afternoon on uh, Monday as the front comes moving through. And then on Tuesday, see there's a system that's mainly to our north. And if you look at everything surface and upper level flow pattern on Tuesday, you come up with the conclusion that the rain shower chances probably pretty good for you folks up in Washington around Tacoma, Olympia, and, and Seattle. I'm not sure if Portland areas to the south get any showers on Tuesday or not. We'll be on the southern boundary of this system on Tuesday, but it's certainly possible. I do have, see the little ridging coming in? This is Wednesday. Wednesday is the next day that I have just mostly sunny and no rain chance. We'll all be dry and we'll all enjoy some nice, pleasant weather. And, and some of us could hit 70 on Wednesday. Here's that little system on Thursday. Remember last time I talked to you, I showed you moisture picking up on Thursday. And I said, I may have to add a rain chance. Well, I've added that rain chance on Thursday. It doesn't look like much on paper. And if we get some rain on Thursday, well, more than likely... Here it is right here getting into Thursday morning. It will more than likely be something like five one hundredths of an inch of rain. Not, not a whole bunch, but there will be clouds and I think some showers on Thursday. And then here comes, let's see, this is the last frame of this updated model. 
New system approaching on Friday. I have I have added a shower threat on Friday, so that's a big change to my forecast. Now, most weather models show this system quickly pulling out and us getting into some dry weather on Saturday and Sunday. Here is uh, right back in here is what could be Saturday, Sunday, even into Memorial Day. And if that's the case, we'd have some temperatures well up into the 70s, maybe even warmer uh, and all dry. But ultimately, the back half of Memorial Day weekend, I still think is a bit uncertain. One more weather model to show you. Um, this is the American uh, GFS model. And again, this, just look at the green areas. These, This is moisture saturation up through 10,000 feet in the atmosphere. So the green shows you kind of the moisture areas that come across. Doesn't mean it's going to be raining, but certainly a heightened chance. So um, I'm just going to play this through. We, we talked about today's rain. We talked about Sunday morning having a look, look at Sunday. There's some warming offshore and then there's a moisture spill. So I think Sunday kind of favors us being in the middle and somehow on the west side of Oregon and Washington becoming dry. But here's that system on Monday. This is Monday morning, about 10 in the morning, right there. See how the elongated band of moisture doesn't look like much and it won't be. Remember, maybe the tenth of an inch of rain or less. That's Monday. And then I mentioned Tuesday that we've got showers. Here's Tuesday. This definitely showers up in western Washington, Seattle, Tacoma, Olympia. See how the, here's Portland where my cursor is in the Columbia River. Uncertain if we get some showers on the southern end of this or if we just get passing cloudiness. But there will be showers Tuesday up in Washington. And then here's Wednesday, that moisture break for all of us. We're really nice. Here comes Thursday system back in here that brings us some shower activity. And then here is Friday. Now, I will tell you that the, the Canadian model, for example, shows a shower threat on Friday, but not as robust as the American GFS. So if this is correct, the American GFS model, your Friday is cloudy and certainly overcast of likely showers. And maybe there's more like two tenths or a quarter of an inch of rain out of that. And then here's Saturday becoming dry. Notice the wind barbs. Now we're getting into a warming south flow. This is Sunday. And then the big question in the forecast for Memorial Day weekend, here's Memorial Day afternoon, is will this next system stay offshore? If it stays offshore, it's going to pump all this warm air into us. And we could be 80 degree, uh, let, me look, let me look at my nose. We could be 80 degree temperatures on Sunday and on Memorial Day with mostly sunny skies if, 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 if this next weather front holds off. This particular model shows this rain coming in on the Tuesday after Memorial Day. So lots to kind of keep you updated on, on that. Hey, real quick, uh, I had one of you say they saw a report that there's just going to be, I think it was three plus inches of rain up in parts of Washington for the remainder of May. So the model I just showed you, this is Seattle, and this is the tabular form of output. And what this shows is that through, well, through the end of May, it shows Seattle getting 1.68. Now, I will tell you 90% of the time when you see numbers on this model that go out four weeks, they're way overdone. But could be could there be an inch of rain in Seattle or 75, 100, seven inch of rain in Seattle between now and the end of the month? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, here is the same model. This is in uh, you know animation form through the end of May. And it's showing four plus inches of rain in the Washington Cascades, showing some decent rain amounts in the northern Oregon Cascades, showing 2.70 inches of total rain the rest of this month in Tillamook, showing over an inch of rain in Portland, showing over an inch of rain in Seattle, 1.14. Um, but again, you would assume these models are, may these are, are maybe as much as 50% overdone. That's why it typically is when you look out four weeks. So we'll see. But certainly, you know, promising uh, rain total is still coming at us. All right, these are the temperatures this morning, starting off in the 50s. I I've been going long. I'm just going to go ahead and jump you. You can click on this on my weather uh, site, portlandweather.com, and it will give you the individual uh, city forecast, for ex example, in Salem. 64 today, chance of showers tomorrow, showers on Monday. And then they've got dry weather on Thursday because that's what some of the output for the modeling is, but I don't believe that. I, I think it's becoming overwhelming that we will see some showers on Thursday. So I just completed this updated seven-day this morning. I've been working on it since four this morning. Hazel Dell Tire Pros up in Vancouver sponsors it. The heavy showers today, but most of today's big downpour is over. But scattered showers could be heavy at times. An early shower chance, and then I feel like we ought to be dry tomorrow afternoon. I mean, the rain chance Sunday afternoon is not zero, but I think it favors us becoming partly sunny and dry. <clears throat> and then Monday, that next system coming in, 
Tuesday, that's the shower chance with most of the rain and maybe all of it being north of the Columbia up toward up into Washington. There's the nice Wednesday that could hit 70. I've got us at 68. And then we talked about the showers coming in on Thursday and then a shower threat on Friday. And again, I have us all in the 60s. And as I mentioned, right now I've got Portland mostly sunny and low 70s on Saturday. I've got Portland mostly sunny, 77 or 80 on Sunday. And if that system holds off, it could be in the 80s on Memorial Day Monday. I'm Rod Hill. Thanks for listening. I know I went a long time. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. You'll be notified when I post. Helps me out too. I'll talk to you soon.